Hey guys, Jacob here, and I'm back with another puzzle. This time, I made the Tetradecaminx. So, first of all, I've had this idea for a while. In fact, about a year ago or so, I designed a version of it, a previous version, that had some problems printing. Uh, not to mention it was a lot bigger than this one. Um, main reason for its problems were sharp edges, but this one is smaller and it's a lot more rounded too, so it turned out a lot better. So, this is a face-turning truncated octahedron. So, it's got hexagonal faces that turn, as well as square faces that turn. The name Tetradecaminx comes from the prefix tetradeca, which means 14, and this puzzle has 14 faces, each of them can turn. And minx implies that it's a puzzle, it's a twisty puzzle in the shape of a complex polyhedron. So the most, the most common minx puzzle is the mega minx. Uh, so, another, next thing I'm going to say is this puzzle turns extremely well, like, whoops, you can just spin the faces, it's very fast and smooth, with very little catching. And it's relatively large, but it's nothing, it's not too crazy. Um, here it is next to a 3x3. Um, this is a 56 millimeter GAN 13. Uh, and the Tetradecaminx has an edge length of 45 millimeters. So, I'm now going to go over the functionality of this puzzle. You already saw it turns on the faces, and each face, uh, each face is fully functional. Uh, but one thing about this puzzle is on the hexagonal faces, you can only do 120 degree turns. Because what happens if you do a 60 degree turn is it doesn't, as you can see, it doesn't line up properly, so it doesn't turn. And this puzzle was inspired by a couple of existing puzzles. Uh, the two main ones are the Tutminx. Uh, this is a puzzle I've had for many years now. This is the Very Puzzle Tutminx version 2. Uh, this is a face-turning buckyball, or truncated icosahedron. It's got 12 pentagonal faces and 20 hexagonal faces. And like the Tetradecaminx, the hexagonal faces can only do 120 degree turns because if you do a 60 degree turn, it doesn't align properly. So this puzzle works just like a Tutminx, just with less faces. The other puzzle it was inspired by and is extremely similar to is the Diane Gem 3. Now, the reason I'm pulling up a picture of this on the internet is because I actually don't have one. Uh, but I've seen it online, and as you can see, it looks very similar to this one. The main difference, though, is as you can see on this one, on the square faces, Every every piece is exposed, like the edges and centers, they're all exposed. But on the Gem 3, they're hidden under the corners. The hexagonal faces also look different. On the Tetradecaminx, the hexagon to hexagon edges are stretched out to make uh, to make them a trapezoid shape. But on here, they uh, come together and form a triangle. So, this puzzle, while very similar to the Diane Gem 3, is different in some important ways. 
So, and as far as I know, this is a unique puzzle. Uh, I did some looking online. I could not find any of these that have ever been made. Uh, but this is a puzzle I've idea I've had for a while that I've just now gotten around to making. Um, I have not tried to solve it yet, but I'm interested to see how that will go. Um, so, I'm about running out of things to say. Oh, there's one more thing I want to talk about, and that is the color scheme. So, this puzzle, despite having 14 faces, only has 8 colors. And the reason I did this, well, the main reason is so I wouldn't have to use 14 different colors of filament because these are tiles, not stickers. And I figured it'd look a little bit nicer too because the less colors you have, the more different they can be. So the square faces have the traditional uh, Rubik's Cube color scheme. And then the hexagonal faces are in an octahedral uh, arrangement. So they have the color scheme of the Lanlan octahedron. So this is a Lanlan FTO. Uh, note the note the color scheme. And then look at these four uh, hexagonal faces around the green face. As you can see, the colors on this correspond to the colors of the hexagons on this puzzle. And I arranged them in a way so that there are no neighboring colors that match. So, I thought that'd be a pretty cool looking color scheme for this puzzle. Um, I really like the way it looks. Uh, and it still makes it so that every piece is unique, so you don't get any unnecessary parity or anything. Although some pieces do look similar. For example, there are two yellow and white edges that are opposite each other, but those are hexagon to square edges, and they cannot be flipped. So. For example, if you try to put this in here, it won't work because there's only one possible orientation for each of these. So, uh, last, very last thing I'm going to do in this video is show you some pieces. Now, the mechanism of this puzzle is nothing too exciting. It's just a basic cylindrical mechanism. But, yeah. So, here's a corner. And here is a, here is an edge. Uh, I spent about two weeks making this puzzle. Uh, although I did have some setbacks toward the end, such as my hot end clogging and I also had to reprint a few pieces because they broke in a way I didn't immediately notice. But luckily those issues have been resolved and this puzzle is completely finished now and uh, works without any problems. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's all I have to say about this puzzle. Uh, um, I, I do have a lot more puzzle ideas that I'm wanting to make. It just might be a while before I actually upload them. Because, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I have a full-time job now. So, yeah, I've been kind of busy with that. The only time I have a ton of free time on is the weekends. But, anyway, enough, enough, um... Enough babbling for me. Uh, I'll see you in the next video, and uh, thanks for watching.